what's up you guys this is Rob from Miguel Guy Plays and today on the snapshot it's all about finding ways to finish when we take a look at the Karudo. Now the Karudo's blueprints drop off of the Tusk Thumper Bull and the Tusk Thumper Doma which is the new mech enemy that you can fight out in the plains just to be aware that it does require mastery rank 9 to craft. However if you are too busy and too tied up doing all of your taxes to take a stroll out in the plains you can always pick this up in the market pre-built along with a weapon slot and a catalyst for 100 and 50 flat. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and jump into the stats. As we can see right here, it has a slow attack speed at 0.833. And for sparring weapons, I really like fast attack animations. And this one just makes my heart break a little bit because I like a flurry of fists and kicks, right? Now, where its stats really do shine, however, is the fact that it has a 31% critical chance and a 2.5 times multiplier, which means that when you do lay into an enemy, oh boy, is it going be juicy. Now, one of the things that I do want to point out because of the fact that we do have auto parry now in melee 2.9999997 um, is that its damage block is only 35%, which I guess makes sense because it's not very much of a weapon to deflect with. And then its status chance is where it really hurts for me. It only sits at 9%. And I mean, ooh, if we had a little bit more status on this with how fast it hits, that would have made me feel a lot better. Now, when it comes to its IPS, it is primarily impact, but it's closely followed by slash with just a teensy tiny sprinkle of puncture. Now, let's go ahead and jump in to a little bit of combat. One of the things that I do want to address is I'm very, very sorry if, you know, you hate my clicking. I can't do anything about it. It's just the way my keyboard is. Um, it, it's loud. I like it loud. And I know that you guys don't like it loud. Also, I do want to point out the fact that um, I will be using two different stances here because in the last video, people got upset that I wasn't using a different stance. I'm sorry, I just prefer a stance that uh, you can clearly see how it performs instead of being pushed all over the place. But, uh... As you can see right here, we're going to do a whole lot of punching. And um, I'm not really showing the weapon at its full power here because I feel like with sparring weapons, one of the real big strengths of it is the fact that um, charge attacks can open enemies up to melee finishers. So as you can see right here, we are using Grim Fury. And Grim Fury is all about fast hits. I guess not with this weapon because the Karudo does feel quite slow. But... One of the things that I absolutely love about sparring weapons is their ability to open up enemies to melee finishers. And look at how quick it takes a 165 bomb bar down. Um, now, the reason that I prefer Grim Fury over Grim Fury? Yeah, Grim Fury over Brutal Tide. I'm pretty sure that's the name. Um, is because of the fact that the melee finishers come a lot faster. Um, unfortunately, there was a little bit of animation there that prevented us from getting it in. Oh, I love it when you just kick them down to the ground. Um, oh, it just feels so freaking good when it comes to um, being able to land those finishers. So you'll actually notice that in the build, I've actually put on an amalgam mod to increase the charge rate for it. But that is definitely the big winner for me when, when it comes to sparring weapons. The only thing that you do have to be aware is if your enemy is in the middle of an animation, um, it's just so nice. Uh, if an enemy is in the middle of an animation, they will not respond to your finisher stun. So that's kind of where it is a bit of a drawback. Again, Grim Fury just feels so good with this because of how fast um, you can get that in. But to be honest with you, Brutal Tide does have its um, charm because of the fact that you do a lot of these kind of like parkour, um, not, I won't say parkour movements, but you have a lot of twirly movements, which... <laughs> I'm sorry, it was just too good. Um, but you get a lot of these kind of like very spinny, swingy movements, which kind of solves one of the big issues with um, a lot of the sparring weapons. A lot of the sparring weapons, you just don't hit many enemies at once, and it has a very, very short range. So um, that's kind of like where sparring weapons kind of fall short. But Brutal Tide, which I'll show you guys in a second, um, kind of alleviates that because you're doing a lot of leaping and a lot of twirling. However, the timing on that is a very... I feel like it's very peculiar. Some people might disagree with me and say, it's the best ever. 
um, but you're entitled to your opinion and I'm entitled to mine. So as you can see here, this is the setup that I have. Now, you could argue, and this is definitely um, valid, that you could knock out Virulent Scourge and Vault Take Strike and just go full in on um, just damage. Don't even worry about the status chance, don't even bother with it, because it is pretty pitiful at only 23% with three status mods in there. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, this isn't necessarily a weapon that I'm gonna like, you know, be rocking, so I don't want to invest more than the three forma I've already invested in it, but if you really feel like you wanna go ham, go ahead and put those, uh, you know, 90% mods in there. Me, you know, I'll you just roll with it. Uh, so as you can see, I have tossed in that Amalgam Organ cha organ Shatter. I don't know why that sounded so weird when I was saying it, but it's the charge attack speed has been increased and you only sacrifice 5% of the critical damage on that. And I'm more than willing uh, to get in on that. I did toss Condition Overload in there as well, uh, which some people might, you know, say is the wrong choice, but I felt like it worked really well. Um, we'll go ahead and swap that out towards the end for... Uh, what is it shattering impact because so many people just think that it's amazing and I feel like this is a little too slow for that Anyway, I'm rambling Let's go ahead and toss in brutal tide so that you can see how it fares and kind of see where my gripes are with this uh, particular stance um, It's just harder to hit the finishers on this. So this is just the normal This is the normal. Oh, I did it. I did it um, This is just the normal um like a taxi like when you punch you're already like halfway across um and if you hold down the button it really it still does the launch for you and then you have to try to like aim it at them to try to get that finisher in there and you know if they're in the middle of an animation sometimes it doesn't always land uh so that's my gripe about it however all of that swirling and twirling is really, really good when you're encountering a, a lots of enemies. So if you've got a lot of enemies and you're doing a lot of the swirly twirly moves, absolutely fantastic for that. But me, personally, I tend to not like it as much. Um, this does have a knockdown kick in it, so I'm gonna do a little bit of, that little that little backwards kick, if you can land it. See, it's, it's not as good at, um, it's not as good at single targets, because you really, you really have to kind of be be good about aiming it. So me personally, it's not my favorite, but you know what? Hey, everybody's got their own everybody's got their own style. They're allowed to, you know, do do whatever they want with it, you know? But me personally, I think I'm going to go ahead and stick to Grim Fury, which to be completely honest with you, I prefer if we're going to go ahead and show that off with um the shattering impact because I feel like it's easier to hit multiple hits in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this real quick. We're gonna to toss on Grim Fury one more time. We're gonna get rid of, let's, you know what? Let's get rid of Drifting Contact. We'll leave Condition Overload in there because we are gonna be able to hit a good amount of things in there. I just like typing in chat. It just makes me happy. So there's Shattering Impact there for you guys because I, listen, the only weapons that I do feel like Shattering Impact works well on are really fast fire rate weapons and even though the crew isn't the fastest in its class it's still it's still a, a, a pretty fast hitter so i want to show you guys how it hits without um doing all of the other what do you call this without doing all of the crazy what is it called uh combo stuff and as you can see i don't necessarily feel like it's the greatest um shattering impact is very very niche but you know what if you want to soften them up and then you want to get in there I mean, hey, you know what? It's your build. You do whatever the hell makes you happy. So me personally, not a Shattering Impact fan for this one. There are some other ones out there that I really do like. Maybe if you toss Prime Fury and went full Berserker and then toss Shattering Impact on there, that would be a little bit better. But me personally, I like going in for the finishers because, you know, who doesn't like to finish? Let me go ahead and fix this before I go ahead and do anything else. The last thing that I do want to show off, y'all, is uh, because of the fact that I did form it, we do have that secondary energy in there. And let me tell you, these ground slams! Look at these multi-tonal ground slams! I'm liking it. I don't think that the colors necessarily mix the best, but it is quite sexy. So that about does it for this episode. Let me know down in the comments below how you feel about your fisting weapons. Do you prefer to, you know, go in and use fist finishers? Or do you prefer to kind of like lay in there with as much fisting as you possibly can to wear them down until, you know, 
they finally collapse. <laughs> Toss all of your feelings down in the comments below. Um, also, let me know if you do, if you are a sparring weapon fan and you have a particular sparring weapon that you absolutely love. Of course, Kogake Prime was absolutely beautiful. Um, but let me know how you feel down in the comments below. And as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, like don't fist them, and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye! Wait, hold up, future Rob here. I just want to point out one thing because I think that DE is a cold-hearted snake. Uh, look at this Riven disposition. Why is it a one-dot Riven disposition? What did this weapon ever do to you? Do you think that this weapon is going to come out as some crazy banger? Because, I mean, it's alright. But one Riven disposition? DE, you are cold, 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 cold. <laughs>